Hello and welcome to the Lesbian Highlights of 2022. This list is compiled of what I think are the best shining lesbian moments we've been blessed with from this past hellscape of a year. Thank God for lesbians, they make everything bearable. At number 10 we have Kate Blanchett finally blessing the lesbian community again by playing an on-screen lesbian in the film Tar. Not only did she play a lesbian who wore suits, causing mass ovulation amongst the female population. She also had an unscripted lesbian kiss in this film, which added so many years to my lifespan, I am now immortal. At number nine, we have the web series Stupid Wife, which gave us all the much needed Brazilian lesbian representation we've been craving. And also beautiful models, which when playing on screen lesbians is always a winning combination with everyone. But this web series is much more than just two very, 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 very pretty faces. It offers a wholesome source of representation for same-sex families, interesting social commentary, mysterious plot twists, and most importantly, great chemistry between the two leads. It's easy to see why so many people are obsessed with this series, even if it is based on a Fifth Harmony fan fiction. Keeping in theme with the sapphic wonders of the web, sharing joint place with Stupid Wife, we have Gap the series, in which Mon and Sam chemistry set fire to both our screens and our lesbian hearts. I mean seriously, this whole show is a lesson in chemistry, which means claiming to watch it for science is absolutely valid. As a very cool plus, this is the first series in Thailand where the two romantic leads are both women. And I would like to thank not only God, but lesbian Jesus too, for bringing these two together. At number eight, we have the epic lesbian on-screen tsunami, otherwise known as the Amazon Prime series, A League of Their Own. You get a lesbian and you get a lesbian. TV adaptation of the 1992 film of the same name. This time around, they did away with the lesbian erasure and it was a home run with the suffix. What am I even saying? I do not do sports. However, if Greta was a real person, I would be very, very tempted to take up baseball. I, I would. Keeping in theme with shows about women's historic contributions, in joint place with a league of their own, we have the second season of Gentleman Jack, which was unfortunately also the last season, but as a silver lining, they did leave Anne and Anne in a very good place and gave us a beautiful end scene, which essentially summed up one of the greatest lesbian romances in history. Oh god, please don't leave us. Take Generation Q instead. At number seven, we have the teenage dream Maya Hawke playing an on-screen lesbian yet again in the dark comedy flick Do Revenge. And honey, I may have came for the lesbianism, but I stayed for the fashion and intelligent social commentary. It's not Maya Hawke's first time playing a sapphic role, but it was her first first on-screen sapphic kiss and uh, I appreciated the hell out of it for Christian purposes. I also very much appreciated that little bearded dragon named Olivia Coleman. Maybe more than the lesbianism, but shh, don't tell anyone else. Keeping in theme with Teenage Kicks, at joint place with Do Revenge, we have the coming of age romantic comedy film Crush which was released earlier this year and produced by the lesbian community's sweetheart, Natasha Leone. Crush is the light-hearted romantic comedy that both younger and senior lesbians like myself deserve. And the best thing about this film is the humour. It had me laughing from beginning to end, which is a nice change from crying over lesbians dying. So it's two thumbs up from me. At number six, we have Dakota Johnson leaving Fifty Shades of Grey for the whole rainbow instead in Am I OK? This film was released at the online Sundance Film Festival earlier this year and I was lucky enough to get a ticket to see it. Look, if Dakota Johnson is going to kiss another woman in your production, then you have my lesbian money. What I loved about this film is it's a rare portrayal of coming out later in life as opposed to coming out as a teenager. And that sets it apart from a lot of other lesbian films. And as a bonus, it was created by Tig Notaro and her wife, Stephanie Allen, who I would trust with my life 
and my heart. At number five, we have the Hallmark film Love Classified, otherwise known as Hallmark's lesbian apology for pulling a lesbian advert from their channel in 2019 due to conservative Christian group One Million Mums putting in a complaint. Ironically, as a lesbian, the idea of One Million Mums is very appealing to me, even if they are homophobic. But moving on, Love Classified is the awful lesbian Hallmark movie we all deserve, and as a plus, it stars Ariane Mandy from the L Word Generation Q. And if we're honest, this film was probably better than all three seasons of Generation Q, put together. At number four, we have the sapphic princess and knight fantasy pairing from Disney that we've all been waiting for, Kit and Jade from Willow. <sighs> What's not to love about a princess and a female knight falling in love? It's literally the stuff that fairy tales are made of. Well, at least now in 2022. At number three, we have Ava and Beatrice from Warrior Nun, finally releasing two seasons worth of deep emotional longing and tension. This kiss was giving everything. It was giving depth, emotion, and connection. And there was even the wiping away of a tear. Oh, and I heard it was personally approved by Jesus himself. Netflix are very unchristian for cancelling this show. Speaking of sapphic shows cancelled by Netflix, in joint place with Warrior Nun, we also have First Kill. Okay, it wasn't the greatest show ever made, but when you have two leads with such incredible chemistry and charm, who cares about the costumes looking like they came from the Halloween aisle out of your local grocery store in October? Look, we don't have many lesbian vampire shows written through a female lens, so when we do get one, it should be protected at all costs. You can't see me right now, but I'm side-eyeing Netflix so, so hard. At number two, we have Bette and Tina finally reuniting after two seasons of tired drama in the L Word Generation Q, gifting us with a long-awaited love scene and their own personal reenactment of Imagine Me and You. With Bette running through the traffic to claim her woman yet again, for once and for all. This scene made me melt, and it's especially touching that they ride off into the sunset together so Marja Lewis Ryan can't do any more damage to their legacy. Although we do still have the wedding to come, Marja may well be the one who interrupts it. Will she really let them escape the show unscathed? We'll just have to wait and see. And finally, at number one, we have Even Villanelle finally putting their beautiful faces together after four long seasons of torturous, torturous lesbian chemistry in Killing Eve. No pun intended. Not only did these two finally kiss, they gave us one of the greatest kisses that I've ever seen in the history of lesbian kisses. And as far as I'm concerned, the series ended right after they kissed too. <sighs> Sandy forever, Laura Nil never. Thanks for watching. Let me know your own lesbian highlights from this year down in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and have a happy new year.